Hello again. In the previous lessons, we started learning about containers in Power Apps. We created different types of containers and added some labels inside them. Now we are going to explore the properties of these containers. As we noticed before, when we add controls to vertical or horizontal containers, we cannot drag and position them freely inside it. Instead, we need to use the container's properties to arrange the items. Let's see how we can do that. Here we are in our app. Let's just create a new screen just to remove this container here that we are not going to use and put in there so we have more space for the others. So I'm going to go to new screen, blank, and then I'm going to select the container one that's the normal container, Ctrl X to cut, and go into screen two and pasting it in there. Here's the container, we don't need it right now. Let's go back to screen one and just reorganize the containers so we have more space to play with them. Okay, this is the vertical and this is the horizontal one. With the container selected, look at the right side properties pane for this container. We have several properties to control how the items inside the container are positioned. The first property is the direction. Here it says it's a vertical container, but we could change it from vertical to horizontal. So if we change to horizontal, then the container starts to behave as a horizontal container. Let's keep it vertical, but keep in mind that you can do this change. The second property is the justify property. This property controls the spacing between the items. Right now, its value is set to start, but we could set to the center, so everything is aligned to the center. I'm going to still increase a little bit more the container. Okay. Now we see that everything is centered. We have the end, so everything goes to the end of the container, in this case to the bottom of the container. And we have the space between. The remaining space splits in the middle of the controls. The second one is the align, in this case the horizontal alignment. Everything now is set to the start, but again, we could, we could put in the center, we could put in the end, or we could do a stretch. So all the controls stretch to occupy the full width of the container. See that now we are being able to position things and control its size and location all at once without needing to configure one by one. Let's make the controls aligned vertically in the center so we can understand the next property, that's the gap. This property sets the space between the elements. Let's set, for example, a gap of 10, and we are going to see that we have 10 pixels between each control. Let's set to 20, and then they move apart a little bit more. Next, we have the horizontal overflow and the vertical overflow. The horizontal overflow would be better visualized in the horizontal container. Let's say we have this situation where the controls inside the container occupy more space than the width of the container. If we activate the horizontal overflow to scroll, then we see a scroll bar here in the bottom and we can scroll to the right to see the full content of the container. For the vertical container, if we decrease the container height, we have the items occupying more space than the container size. And if we enable the vertical control to scroll, then we see the scroll bar here and we can see all the contents. Of course, the horizontal overflow also works for the vertical container. Let's suppose, for example, that one of these labels has a wider width than the width of the container. So it will show the horizontal scroll. Let's select the label one, for example, and then we have the property minimum width. Since it's inside a container, we have this property for the label now. It means what's the minimum width of this label. It doesn't matter if the container is saying that the items are going to stretch to occupy the full size, but if we have a minimum width, it will respect that minimum width. So let's say instead of 150, let's put 1,500. Now, the label is very wide and as we can see 
we see the scroll bar here in the bottom. So now we have this scroll bar that allows us to see the whole content of the container. Okay, let's select the label back and put the mean width back to 150. And we have here again the container as before. The last property that we have here for the containers is the wrap property. This property is mainly used in the horizontal container. Let's go to the horizontal container. Now that we see that, for example, we have the controls wider than the container, occupying more space than the container, we can activate the wrap property. See what happens when you click on it. The controls that don't fit in the container, that passes the border of the container, will go to the next row. In this way, if you have a lot of controls, they will fit the container accordingly. Imagine that this container was in the screen of an app that could change the screen size. So depending on the screen size, if it was wider, then we could see three items in a row. If the screen size is smaller, a smartphone, for example, then it would adapt to show accordingly to the screen size. So here you can see it working. We can add the gap, let's say 16. And then if we decrease the width, it will go to the next row and also apply the same gap. Very interesting. Now we have other properties that are also in other objects, other controls that we have in Power Apps. That's the position X and Y, means where it's located in the Canva. And then we have the padding that's also very interesting for containers. The padding is the space between the border and the controls. So as we can see now, the padding is zero we see that the labels are touching the borders of the containers. If we click on the container, I'm going to select both. So I apply the same properties to both at the same time. In this case, just for us to see what happens. Let's set 16 to the top. And then we see that we have this space in the top. Okay, let's add 32 so we see even better. To the bottom, 32. Then we have 32 also added to the bottom. Here we don't see because the controls are not touching the borders. But now we are going to see better in the left and in the right. Let's add also 32 to the left and we see that it added a space here to the left. And then 32 to the right and it also added the space here to the right. And see now how they are very nice distributed, especially for this one that's vertical. For the horizontal one, it will depend on how we configure. Right now it's configured to be aligned to the left, but if we put to align to the center, then it is very aligned to the center. Since we have the wrap enabled, if we decrease the width, the controls will also adjust here. Right, we will still have those other properties, such as color that represents the background color of the container. We have the border, so we can add a border to it and also set the border color. We have border radius, so we can put a big border radius here just to see. Let's say 40. We also have the drop shadow. That's this shadow that goes around the container. Let me just remove the border from it and put white as the color. The shadow in this case represents, let me put an extra bold shadow. We see a shadow around it. Depending on the background color, it does a very nice visual. So we have it, we could select from several options or we can even disable setting to none. And the visibility so we can hide and show a container. This is very used when we want to, for example, build a pop-up. This pop-up could be used to add a new item, delete, or do some action that's temporary in the app. And it's combined with a variable that goes in the visible property. Don't worry about it now. We are going to see that when we talk about formulas, but just know that that's possible, right? So let me just put, as we had before, border radius, I think it was six, and there, and that's it. Okay, now we saw the main properties for the containers. Let's start playing with the controls inside the container. 
when we select any control that's inside the container, for example, let me select this label, we see that we have now some display properties that are related to the container. We already saw in the quick example I gave showing the minimum width. In the next lesson, let's take a better look at these properties and understand a little bit and do some practical examples. So after that, we are ready to do some practical examples using containers to reinforce what we just learned. See you in the next lesson.